Hey, with just one photo of any character you've got, I can whip up a whole bunch of photos like this. And don't worry, the character will look totally consistent across all of them. And from there, I can create pictures that change a character's outfit like this, or even multiple outfits at once. Hey there, I'm so Tai. In my recent videos, I've shown you how to create consistent characters across a series of generated images using the best methods like PooLid or Infinite U. But someone asked me, how can we create consistent images with non-human characters using these workflows? Well, sadly, the answer is no. These two methods only work with human character inputs because of their feature extraction modules. So, today, I'm going to guide you through a workflow to create a bunch of consistent images with any character, even non-human ones. All right, let's dive in. All right, let me introduce you to a cool method called UNO, less to more generalization, unlocking more controllability by in-context generation, developed by a research team from ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok. As you can see, the authors are really showcasing the solutions capabilities here. First up, let's talk about one-to-one. -one. This is UNO's core feature, letting you fully control any subject. You give UNO a reference image, like a watch or this adorable raccoon plushie, and voila, UNO can whip up tons of variations of that object. The best part? Your subject can be anything, not just limited to human characters like I mentioned before. But UNO doesn't stop at just one subject. Let's move on to two to one. With this feature, you can control two subjects at the same time. Picture this, you've got character A and character B, and UNO can create an image where both interact with each other, all while keeping their original identities from the reference images perfectly intact. This is such an awesome capability, especially since other solutions, even PooLid, still struggle with this. And speaking of practical uses, let's talk about virtual try-on. By combining multi-subject control with face identity preservation, UNO makes incredibly realistic virtual try-on apps possible. You can see yourself or a model trying on different outfits and accessories without ever stepping foot in a store. Super convenient, right? And if you'd like to see more examples of what UNO can do, you can check them out here. Alright, we've seen how awesome UNO can be. Now, let me walk you through how to install and use it on your own computer totally free. As usual, to make things quick and easy, I'll guide you through setting up the solution on ComfyUI. If you're new to ComfyUI, check out my previous videos for a rundown on how it works. To run the UNO solution on ComfyUI, we'll need to install some custom nodes for support. First, install ComfyUI Manager and make sure its version is higher than 3.0. If your ComfyUI doesn't have the ComfyUI Manager node yet, head over to the ComfyUI Manager GitHub page and follow the instructions there. Next, go to the config.init file at the path below, change security level equals weak, and save it. To apply the new config, restart ComfyUI and refresh the path. Alright, to install the custom node for the UNO solution, head to ComfyUI Manager, click Install via Git, and paste the link I've provided below into the field. Hit Confirm to start the installation. Once ComfyUI finishes installing, click Restart on ComfyUI and refresh the access path to update. All right, before moving on to the next step, you'll need to prepare the models and place them in the right locations, which I'll specify here. You can find the download links for the models in the video description. For the Annette and VAE models, head to the Flux Hugging Face page and download them from there. For the LoRa model, visit the UNO Hugging Face link and download it from there.
everything set, and we're ready to start building the UNO workflow on ComfyUI. I'll also walk you through some cool tricks with this workflow to help you get the best quality and performance for your tasks. To use UNO, I'll load a node called UNO Generate. As you can see, this node neatly wraps up UNO sampling process into a single node. It takes the UNO model along with your input reference images and outputs the final image. You'll also need to provide an input prompt and tweak some parameters that affect the sampling process of the Flux model like image size, guidance scale, and so on. To load the UNO model, the creator has also built a node called UNO Model Loader. This node takes in the Flux modules like the UNET, VAE, and UNO LoRa. And of course, to wrap up the workflow, I'll use the preview image node to display the output so we can check the results. The creator limits us to loading for input images, but honestly, that's more than enough for my needs. First, I'll check if the workflow is running smoothly by loading one image of my character. A cute little fox, at the start of the video. My simple test prompt will be an anime-style fox playing the guitar while standing in a bamboo forest. Now, let's hit run and see the results. Wow, look at that, the workflow worked like a charm. The new image captures my fox character spot on, from the colors to the facial expression and vibe. It's also exactly what I described in the prompt, playing the guitar in a bamboo forest. So awesome! With that, we've successfully built the UNO workflow on ComfyUI. Next up, let's dive into checking its performance, and I'll share some handy tricks I've picked up while exploring it. First, let me show you how to optimize GPU resources. If you run this default workflow on your computer and get an error like this, it means your PC doesn't have enough GPU RAM to handle the workflow. The default workflow by the creator requires over 40 gigabytes of GPU RAM. So, for regular users, you'll need to tweak the workflow a bit to make it work. The simple fix is to enable two options in the UNO model loader node. Use float 8 and offload. Once you turn these on, the workflow will only need about 15 gigabytes of GPU RAM. However, this comes with a slight trade-off in quality and speed. As you can see here, I compared the speed when enabling these two options versus the default settings. When I turned on both options, the image generation speed on my machine slowed down by about 5 times, specifically 25 seconds compared to 5 seconds. That said, to run this workflow smoothly, you'll need to make this trade-off if you're working with limited GPU resources. Alright, now you can run the workflow on your computer. Let's check out the performance of the UNO solution. First, we'll test the quality using a single input character. Like in the example when testing the workflow, but this time, I ran it multiple times to see if the solution's performance stays consistent. Click Run and check out the result. Nice job! Distill my trusty fox from my input image. I'll open it in a new tab to save it. Let's keep going. Awesome! This one looks even better than before. I'll give it another try. Wow, after three rounds of generating images, the results are still super consistent with the character while matching the prompt we gave. In the three images, I think this one nails the character consistency and has better quality than the other two. The chance of getting a satisfying image is about one-third, which is pretty solid for text-to-image models like Flux. 
Now I'm gonna step up the challenge with a tougher scenario. Handling two characters at once. I'll add a new character, this cute little bird. The prompt will be simple. A fox and a bird are in the bamboo forest. Let's see how Uno handles this dual character constraint and what we get. Oh no, while my fox still looks spot on, the bird didn't quite make it. It seems like the bird's been influenced by the fox's features, like its color. I'll try generating again to see if this was just a random fluke. Oh what a shame, the result's still the same. The fox is perfectly consistent, but the birds morphed into a different one, not what I was expecting at all. Still, in the first demo video, the author showed that the solution could handle two objects like a champ. So, I'm gonna try again with a new object, this time a car. Let's tweak the prompt and see what happens. Awesome! Check it out! This time, the result is exactly what we wanted. The fox stays true to form as always, and now the car's spot on too matching the input image's color and style perfectly. Let me tweak the node size a bit so everyone can see it better. I'll give it one more go to make sure the result holds up consistently. Sweet, the fox and the car in the output image still make me confident they're my characters. This result proves that Uno can handle the multi-object constraint scenario in this case like a pro. Let me break down why Uno nailed it this time. As you can see in the workflow here, when you feed two object images into the node, there's no option to specify which image is the fox or which is the car. This causes issues when you upload two character images with similar traits, like both being animals, making it tough for Uno to match the right features to the right object in the prompt. On the flip side, when we upload images of a car and a fox, Uno has an easier time because their features are distinct. That's how we get an output that matches our expectations. So, Uno's multi-object constraint feature works great for objects from different classes but struggles when the objects belong to the same class. Alright, let's jump into the most exciting part of the solution, just like in the demo virtual try-on. I'll upload a photo with the model's face, and then the outfit I want, which is this trendy dress. As I mentioned earlier, since these two objects aren't in the same class, this experiment should work out great. My prompt is super simple. A woman is wearing a dress. Now, let's hit run and see the results. Oh, based on the prompt I used, my character's outfit has been swapped, but as you can see, there's a little hiccup with the clothing. The bottom part looks like the image I provided, but the top part has this blue color from the original outfit in my character's photo. This happens because the solution doesn't automatically isolate the face area, so it picks up not just the facial features but also the characteristics of the clothing in the image. To avoid this, you should only upload an image of the face, like this one, for the character. This will avoid the issue I just mentioned. Let me generate the image again to show you the result. See that? The outfit now matches the photo I provided. Let's take a closer look at the result to better evaluate the quality of the solution. I can see that the dress in the photo has a style and color that match my input image pretty well. However, as you can notice, the subtle patterns and the pearl beads on the dress didn't carry over. It seems the solution still struggles to preserve the finer details of the outfit. I'll give it another try to see if my observation holds true, or if it's just a random image generation quirk. Looking at the results, 
I'm pretty confident my observation was spot on. Just like the previous image generation, there aren't any pearls attached to the dress. It seems this feature still struggles with capturing small details on clothing. This is likely a limitation of the Flux image generation model or generative networks in general. So, this time I'm gonna try a less complex outfit. It's this short checkered skirt, with no logos or pearls attached. I'll tweak the prompt a bit too. A woman is wearing a t-shirt and a skirt. Let's check out the results together. Oh awesome! Check it out! This time, the results are exactly what I was hoping for. The skirt's pattern and colors match the input image perfectly. This time, the solution nailed all the skirt's features, even the elastic waistband detail. I'm going to generate one more image to make sure the solution is consistent. I'll tweak the seed value here, and let's wait for the results. As you can see, the solution's quality is still solid here. After two image generations, my outfit came out consistently great. From this, we can conclude that Uno could be a solid choice for building a workflow for a virtual try-on app. The solution nails the style and colors of the clothing, but it seems to work best with patterns of medium size or larger. For outfits with lots of tiny details or small patterns, the solution still falls a bit short. All right. Let me share a quick tip to make using this virtual try-on workflow even smoother. As you saw in the first example, we usually have images of a person in portrait or full body shots, sometimes even with others in the frame like this. So, how do we avoid messing around with photo editing software like Photoshop to isolate the face we want? It's super simple. I'll load the PooLid face detector node, which I showed you in the intro video about the PooLid solution. This node takes the input image, detects the portrait area based on the option you pick, and outputs the exact face region you're after. I'll also load some additional nodes to feed the right inputs into this one. Here, I'll set the order to left-right for easy management and choose index 0 to select the woman's face. I'll also display the input image here so we can check it together. Hit run, and let's take a look at the results. As you can see, the face region has been extracted accurately, and the result is just like our previous tests. But this time, we can easily upload any image of a person we have on hand without needing to edit it thanks to the PooLid solution node. All right, so I've just walked you through how to build a workflow to create consistent images of any subject using Uno, plus how to extend it for virtual try-on tasks. I hope you watched the full video to catch all my tips and tricks. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it so more people can find my content. Thanks a bunch. For now, peace out and I'll catch you in the next one.